Ralph Howard is the CEO of Fazoli's. Mr. Howard, welcome. Good to have you with us. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Tyler. I, I think the greatest thing that caught my eye in my uh, reference notes uh, about your company is that while people wait in their cars uh, for their drive through orders to be fulfilled, you hand out complimentary breadsticks. That is a genius yeah. idea. Oh, well, thank you so much. And our breadsticks are the goat. I mean, they, we really do have a fantastic breadsticks, and we're known for it. But, yeah, we, we put people out in the drive through handing out breadsticks, and really it was a surprise and delight. It was a really a good move. It worked out really well for us. So talk to me a little bit about how your business mix has changed as a result of the pandemic from dine-in, carry-out, to drive through How much bigger a proportion is drive through today than it was six, seven months ago? Yeah, so it was about 35%, and it's moved up to about 60%. And we've also seen a spike in delivery from about 5% to 10%. So we, we've definitely put uh, and shifted a lot of uh, our sales to off-premise, uh, whether it's drive through curbside, uh, delivery. So it's d definitely a significant part of our business. It's over 75% of our business right now. Are most people who are doing drive through are they ordering on site or are they pre-ordering by app and then coming to pick up, which is, which is another way, which is really carry out? Yeah. So we have pretty much every known possible way a consumer <laughs> can order our product. So they can order ahead on their mobile app pull into a curbside and we'll run it out to them. They can actually uh, note on their app that they're going to go through the drive through and pick it up that way. Majority of our people, they still come through the drive through place the order. We also have added a person outside with an ordering tablet. So we are actually going back five cars deeper than we used to. So, uh, you know, keep keeping the consumer uh, in the line. So you, you so you're, you're hitting the consumer's earlier that way so that their food is actually ready when it comes. What is the average ticket price and has it gone up or down since the pandemic started? Yeah, so our average ticket price is about $7.50 and it's went down by about 8%. And I'll tell you why. We've been promoting extreme value because I think it's one of the three keys to really survival and thriving in this market. And you know, we've created items like the 1999 Super Family Meal and we have just taken off, and the brand just exploded. How many people does a super family meal feed? <laughs> well, it can it can feed four twice a day. So you get a whole <laughs> a whole pizza, two buckets of pasta, fettuccine alfredo, spaghetti and meat sauce, or marinara, sixteen breadsticks, a gallon of tea, and uh, it, it's a lot of food. But uh, it, you know, for for nineteen ninety nine, I've received so many viral. So many uh, reach outs on Facebook and LinkedIn actually thanking me because it's able to feed their family twice in that day. And, every, you know, there's a lot of people on a tight budget right now. Rahel and I will be right over because <laughs> it's Definitely great. Definitely breadsticks. Right. You want to jump in, Rahel? You have a question? <laughs> yeah. You know, Carl, I, I do wonder that with you guys increasing the value options, which clearly is working quite well for you guys, you've also had to spend quite a bit on sanitation stations and making sure that you can run these businesses safely in these COVID times. How are you balancing out the cost of uh, increased expenses because of COVID with um, meeting the, the needs right now, the demand right now? Yeah, so we're definitely higher in, in labor costs and then miscellaneous costs, whether it's sanitation, mask, and gloves. But we're exceeding any of those costs through our, our, our traffic. I mean, we've been up double-digit traffic for the last 12 weeks. So, you know, we're getting the throughput in and, and, and serving the consumer, and it's offsetting those costs. Uh, our EBITDA has been up about 30% every period uh, for the last three months. So, you know, that's helped, but the, that's helped us overcome that. And if it wasn't for the traffic, it, you know, it would be a real opportunity. You know, I do wonder, you said in your pre-interview that for your locations that unfortunately didn't have drive through locations, you had to close them. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if, you know, someone's at home watching and they're a restaurant owner and they don't geographically have that option of installing a drive through what might some other alternatives be for them to try to keep their business alive? Yes. So you really have to focus on convenience and having a drive through or, or some type of or, um, a, a curbside pickup, a touchless experience is really important. So if they're not offering curbside service, that would certainly be something I would do it. But convenience is also you know, the third stool of this uh, success story. And you really have to provide a, a strong digital presence. Uh, we're, we're living in a stay at home economy. And you have to provide every known way for the consumer to be able to order your product and every known way for the consumer to be able to receive your product. 